in a real estate decline, all of your assets that are correlated are going to go down together, right? Which is not good. That's how bankruptcies happen. That is why I developed the Bulletproof Wealth Strategy to where you have a safe asset that is non-correlated to the risk asset that you're putting your money into. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. We're back once again to continue to help to educate you so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident investing beyond your backyard. And yes, I'm your host, Billy Keels, and I am looking forward to sharing today's conversation with you because I know that you are going to get loads and loads out of it, especially if you're looking to have a, well, stressfully stress-free planning life. Say that fast three times. So, but you know what, before we get to that, there's a couple things because I know so many of you understand that we continue to move up the charts. This podcast, thanks to you, and you continue to download the episodes, you continue to share the episodes, and you continue to take the information and put it into practice, which is exactly what we want. Don't just listen to the podcast, but take the ideas, take the strategies, take the tactics, and put them into action. See what, they, see what results you're able to get. And also too, because you're gaining wonderful access from these fantastic guests, if you've learned at least one thing, I'd love for you to take just a second to add or to leave your honest written review on the Apple Podcast platform. We've made a really simple video for you to uh, also be able to learn if you feel like maybe a little bit uncomfortable how to do that. Just go once again, um, leave your honest written review as well as a rating. Would really appreciate that. And you can also check out the video. We made a, like a little easy link. Just go check out very simple video that you can follow. Also, a lot of you have asked for how can you find really, really early episodes? You want to go back. You want to see all the mistakes that Billy was making before. You want to hear the specific guest and blah, blah, blah. And listen, we've made that easy for you as well. Just go to billykeels.com. When you get there, go to the podcast tab, and then you can find every single episode we've ever had, every single guest. Once again, that's billykeels.com. Once you get to billykills.com, just go to the podcast tab and you will see every single episode that we have ever, ever had, both the audio version, the video version. It'll be fantastic. And for those of you, then there are many that are accredited investors and you want to be able to connect with a new organization or a new club that's getting started grassroots. It's very, very like raw right now. So just if you want to find out more, send an email, send me an email to AI club at Billy uh, Once again, that's AI club at Billy We'll make sure that I get the email. I will follow up with you personally. And uh, from there, well, we'll get to, uh, get to understand a little bit more about what you'd like to do. If you want to find out just to connect with other accredited investors, if you want to also find out more about specific types of opportunities, uh, it'd be a great place for, uh, for you to connect. So send in an email to AIclub at billykeels.com. And so, listen, I know a lot of you get really particularly stressed and you're trying to figure out how you can plan for your long distance investing success, but you don't really know where to start. And you, you maybe some of the different opportunities you've seen or exactly what you were looking for. Well, listen, it's not all just real estate. I know we talk a lot about real estate, but there are a number of different tools that can help you to have stress-free planning on how you can get to the long distance investing success that you're looking for. And today's guest uh, has you know, literally created a, a, a bulletproof wealth way how to do that. He's going to talk to us a lot about what this specific tool is, how this specific tool can help you. And this guy even comes from, he doesn't even come from a financial services background. He comes from a background in the music industry, super successful. And then he's taken a lot of that because he had a life event. And now he is really helping other people to create stress-free and bulletproof wealth that they are able to, and you will be able to take some of the ideas, the tactics, the actions, and be able to have a stress-free planning for your life. So, I'm really looking forward to you hearing today's conversation with Tom Launa that's going to be coming up just after this. Whether you're an active investor or a passive investor, you really like your day job and you want to continue to go into your day job every single day feeling better, knowing that you've created the right options for yourself. At the same time, you just don't have enough time to really get your head around, spend all the hours investing long distance. Well, one way or the other, I, over the last number of years that I have been investing long distance, I've really understood a number of the major mistakes that you should avoid if you want to get to creating the right options for yourself much faster and being able to create more income sooner. And if you want to do that, if you want to understand more about that, I've made it really, really simple. You can just go to billykeels.com forward slash seven mistakes to avoid. You can learn all the things that the, the seven major mistakes that I've seen over and over again that I want you to avoid. Once again, you can go to billykeels.com forward slash seven mistakes to avoid. Freedom. 
So if you want to understand how you can have stress-free planning, how that can actually accelerate your long distance investing success, then guess what? Today's a conversation that you're going to want to listen to until the very last word. I promise. You know why? Because today's guest not only enjoyed an illustrious, almost 30 year career in the music industry. Also, you know what? He got a piece of advice that proved to be very valuable during a, let's say, somewhat difficult period in his life. And I'm really hoping he's going to tell us more about that story. You know, and after that, he decided that he wanted to help other people to protect their financial future. And so with a lot of education that he received, as well as lots of research that he'd done, he went out and founded Bulletproof Wealth, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome to today's conversation the founder of Bulletproof Wealth, as I said, Mr. Tom Lonnie. Tom, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, Billy. It's so great to be here. Thank you for having me on. Hey, man, this is going to be really, really awesome. <laughs> love the pre-chat. Love your energy. Love your insight. And I am sure that the entire Going Long family is going to take away so much from today's conversation. So please, everybody, just get prepared. If you're running on the treadmill, if you're doing something else, cooking dinner, this is one of these uh, kind of conversations you're going to want to make sure that you're taking copious notes to get ready for. So listen, here's the thing, Tom. As you know, everybody gets the same five questions. You're going to get two in the beginning. You're going to get three in the end. And then in the middle, well, I'm just going to ask you a whole bunch of questions so that the Going Long family can get to know you even more. But I have no idea what those awesome. questions are. So let's jump right into it. So first question that I'd love for you to answer for us is, where exactly like do you live in the United States? So I'm in Tennessee and it's just absolutely gorgeous here. And I'm actually about an hour south of Nashville and I actually live on a, a farm. So I'm on a 72 acre farm with beautiful rolling hills. And it's just, it's just awesome to be able to get up every morning, wake up every morning and see the view of Tennessee. And it's just a wonderful place to live. Fantastic. So the wonderful state of Tennessee and about an hour south of Nashville. So fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Second question for you. Help us understand what's the most positive thing that's happened to you in the last 24 hours? Okay. In the last 24 hours, the best thing that happened to me is that I was able to take my two kids, which I just adore bowling. And I did that yesterday afternoon. And, and the cool thing is with my job is that I don't it's not like I'm clocking in and clocking out. I'm just working for myself. And I said, Hey, you know what? I'm taking the afternoon off and we're going to go bowling and then go to dinner and just relax. And that's what I did yesterday. And it was so good just to be with them. Wow, man. Quality time with the kids and bowling. And you know, what's, what, what is not to love about that? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, appreciate you sharing that with us. And listen, so sure. one, of the, one, one of the things, Tom, and so look, I give myself this really impossible task. You've done a lot of, lot of things. You've added a lot of value to so many different people. I mean, you've even founded your own approach, which is Bulletproof Wealth. And so, although I try to tell your backstory in like two and a half seconds, it's impossible. So can you do yeah. us a favor? Can you help the entire Going Long family get to know you better, understanding more about your story told by you? And if you could also do us a favor, Tom, can you help us to understand some of the really important or major decisions that you've made to get to this point in your journey? And then from there, we'll see where sure. the conversation goes. Absolutely. So the bottom line is, is that I grew up always being interested in music, but I grew up in Nebraska, which is a, a, a state where it's primarily rural farmers and there's not a lot of music going on there. So when I turned 18, I went to college in Tennessee because I wanted to be near the music industry, which is in primarily in Nashville and New York and Los Angeles. Those are the three major cities that is the center of the music industry. So anyways, I went to, uh, left Nebraska, went to uh, Tennessee and got three degrees there, one in recording engineering, one in film and video production, and one in um, uh, electronics. So I had three, three undergraduate degrees. And then I got an amazing opportunity to work at a studio. And literally when I walked in the door, ZZ Top was recording their Eliminator record, which is the one with legs and all the great hits on it. So I walked in the door and there they were, and I got to meet everybody. And it basically just rolled on from there. And the key to my success in the music industry was that I had great mentors. In other words, I had people teaching me this is how you do it. And they had gone before me. And honestly, that's just absolutely critical to make it, I think, in any industry. So 
I, I moved forward 29 years. I had done hundreds and hundreds of records. I was fortunate enough to get to actually work with people like Bruce Springsteen, uh, Mavis Staples, you know, Al Green. I, I, just the list goes on and on and on um, of wonderful artists, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Fabulous Thunderbirds, um, you know, just huge uh, pop artists. And also I did a bunch of work in the contemporary Christian recording business as well. I did about 300 albums in that world, which was really fun. And, um, but late into that career, I was working on a movie soundtrack and I lost hearing in one ear due to a, an incident in the studio. And it was not total, but it was enough that I was not able to continue to do my job. And the cool thing about it, Billy, was that 20 some years before that, I had a financial professional tell me, hey, you really need to protect your income and, and get this long-term disability policy. So when I had this hearing loss that prevented me from doing my career in music, all of a sudden I had all this tax-free income coming to me every month, every month, every month. And I literally was like going, oh my gosh, if I didn't have this in place, I probably would have been, you know, not, not to disparage this, but I probably would have been working at Home Depot or something because this is all I knew was 29 years of doing music. So I decided because that particular um, long-term disability policy worked so well for me, I decided to learn as much as I could about how to guide and um, help other people protect their wealth and grow it. So that's when I went back to school and got three financial designations. And it took me four years of constant studies to do this. And I did it at a later age. I was in my mid forties. So it was, I went back and got a chartered financial consultant designation, a chartered life underwriter and a chartered special needs consultant designation. So my original plan, Billy, believe it or not, was to work with of families who had loved ones with special needs. That was where I was really passionate about. I really wanted to do it. Um, I had a friend who had a child with special needs and I thought that I was gonna make a big impact and it was a total bomb, man. I mean, it just did not go anywhere. I tried so hard to move and work and figure out how to, to impact that community, but everything I tried just dead ended. Um, and so that happens sometimes, right? And I think one of the keys to being successful is you've got to be able to pivot and figure out where is your natural audience. And I had um, what happened to me is that everybody who I was working with were crazily enough real estate investors. And I tried to put the pieces together as to why was I working with mostly real estate investors um, and people interested in real estate. And the reason ended up being because they wanted control of their money. They wanted some way to have a, a say in what happened in their financial future, unlike the traditional investor who wants to give their money to a professional money manager to manage it for them. And they don't want any control or want any specifics about how that works. So that's how I ended up in that marketplace, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, it absolutely does. And so it's, you know, one of the things, I guess my my question for you, because you, you helped us to understand how you've gotten to this point and you, you've yeah. had a number of things, but, but what was it about the music industry in general that kind of made you want to go there? Well, what did I, why did I want to do the music industry? Yeah. Man, that, that is so easy. Cause I grew up as a, as a kid, just playing in bands I had my own band and what I tried to do over and over again was figure out how to record my band to make it sound like the records I was hearing. So I was a huge fan of Tom Petty and early Led Zeppelin and all of this stuff when I was growing up. And I was like, man, these records don't sound 
anything like what I'm able to do. And I realized there was this massive knowledge gap between what I understood recording to be and then what professional recording was. So that is why I tried to fill that gap, that knowledge gap and go and get a degree and learn, you know, and honestly, to be totally frank with you, my, uh, while I did do four years of college, um, the real learning came in the real world when I got underneath these um, fabulous engineers who taught me what they knew. That's where I really, really learned was watching it happen in real life. And so I, I think, and, and I'm, I, I may just build on top of that. So I would say that your real learning actually took when you saw things happening and then you actually started to replicate it and do it yourself, which, which, yeah. I, think, which I think is really interesting, right? Because this is one of the topics that we love to talk about, right? I, I'm, I'm someone who lives in, in Barcelona, Spain. I think everybody knows that. If not, there wouldn't be here in the Going Along podcast or maybe you're new today. So welcome. <laughs> yes, I'm in Barcelona, Spain. And so one of those things is you, you start to realize that as you are um, in different places and you have a certain level of education, maybe it's just a base level. Like I learned Spanish and, but I didn't actually start really learning until I really took the foundational level of education that I had. But then I went out and I started taking some very calculated risks based on what I already knew about the language, what I started to know about the culture and things like that. And it's a pattern that I would say very early on in this conversation that we're recognizing. Not only did you get um, multiple uh, degrees per se, but you also then went through multiple certifications in terms of being able to really go out and help other people. And I love the fact that you mentioned that you did this, as you said, quote unquote, later in life uh, in your 40s. Yeah. I mean, it's this, I guess everything yeah. kind of gives its perspective, right? But what do you think that, totally. it, that it really helped you do in terms of the certifications and having this passion to be able to want to help other people in terms of your efficacy and being able to help other people doing it at a quote unquote later age? Well, okay. So there, there's several things. Number one, I think a lot of people get into the financial services business without having a really well-rounded uh, educational background in it. So the, the reason that I wanted to go and get all these designations, which is it's extremely rigorous to do this. You have to study and then you have to take proctored exams where you're literally under the microscope. I mean, they film you while you're taking these exams. They make you empty your pockets. You have to go through uh, metal detectors. You have to do just all this ridiculous stuff to be able to take these tests to make sure that there's no possible way that there's anything, um, you know, going on that is not 100% legit with the knowledge coming out of your head. So anyways, I did that so I could learn the whole world of what was happening in the financial services industry, because I think there's way too many people, Billy, that get into this career by just learning this much and then going out and trying to apply it without having a good base knowledge of what is going on. So I think that helped me. And then I think doing it a little bit later in life helped me dramatically because I was able to just relax a little bit and realize that I didn't know everything and that I had to really take my time and make sure that I didn't speak on something or talk to people about something that I didn't fully understand. Um, I think that that goes on a lot unfortunately. And I think that's why there's such a high turnover rate in the financial services industry. And I mean, ridiculously high in what I do. If, if you make it past three years, you're, you're pretty good. I've been doing it now for nine years. And um, so I think I'm over the hump now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think you're good. I think you're good. <laughs> uh, Tom, probably a lot of um, the going long families thinking to themselves, okay, well, yeah, you had this really interesting um, and policy that you purchased and it helped you to, you, cause you mentioned to create, generate tax free. And that's always for a lot of us that are listening. It's like, Oh, hang on a second. Yep. Tax free. I want to find out more about that. Yep. But I have, I, and I yep. don't like to ask two questions normally, but I am going to ask you two questions. The first question is how in the world did you find out about this kind of special policy? Number one. And mm -hmm. then number two, I, I guess when you started receiving this tax free wealth versus what you were earning, which was probably heavily taxed as a high wage earner. How did that yeah. make you feel? Wow. Well, I, it's a great question. And I learned out, about, I learned about the policy from a financial advisor, financial professional coming to me and explaining that, Hey, you're earning really good income. And I was doing really well in the music industry. You need to capture that now 
while you're earning it. Because one of the things that people don't understand about insurance products specifically is that they're capturing a moment of time. In other words, if you're earning um, a high income right now, let's just let's just say you're earning a million dollars a year right now, you might not be earning a million dollars a year two years from now. There's no way to know for sure what you're going to do in the future. But for insurance, it's a snapshot, right? It's just they're taking this picture, financial picture. And once you get qualified to own these products, then you can keep them in force forever, no matter what your income does in the future. And that is why it was so important for me to um, take that advice, take it to heart and to put this actually in place. So the bottom line is I didn't even know what I was getting really truthfully because I was in the music industry, but what I was getting was a long-term disability policy with what's called an own occupation rider. And what that means is that it would pay a disability to me tax-free, whether or not I was working in another career or not. Got it. Okay. So that is why it worked out so good. And it was for five years of, of own occupation. And then it converted to what's called any occupation, which I never took advantage of that because by the time the five years were up, I was already making a, a living in another career. Right. So any occupation means you cannot work in your uh, you can't work at all, right? Gotcha. There's, you have a disability that prevents you from working. Own occupation means you can't work in your career. So for you doctors out there, right? If, if there's a problem with your hand or your eye or your just all of these different things that could, would prevent you from doing your job, then say you can't be a surgeon, but you could teach at a medical university, then this own occupation policy would actually be super beneficial, which is perfect. And so being able to have these types of plans and policies or tools, I guess at the end of the day, they're tools that help us yeah. to achieve a specific um, benefit or result that we're looking for. But I guess the, in the reason for the, the first question was really understanding, like, was this part of a master plan? Was this part of something that you had done? But it sounds to me like, and confirm this, but it sounds to me like yeah. someone was actually doing their job. They knew a specific niche of people that work in the music industry that, and they were there to able to say, Hey, listen, if you can't do this in the future, you're going to be really at risk. And so it was really yes. just somebody doing their job. It wasn't really like you had this master plan or anything like that. Right? No, I didn't have a master plan, but I saw how much it helped me. So yeah. that's really how I started developing the bulletproof wealth strategy that I've created and trademarked. And now it is something that I am so excited about helping um uh, helping just investors in general and especially high income earners be able to protect their wealth and be able to use their money as efficiently as possible perfect and so the efficient use of money is something that resonates with all of us that are here and listening and running on treadmills and stuff yeah. like that that i talked to you about before Wow, don't you just love this conversation? This is amazing, this is so fantastic. And so just really quickly, I just wanted to remind you, for those of you that are looking to create more options for yourself, get there faster and do that with long distance investing, make sure that you go to billykeels.com forward slash seven mistakes to avoid so that you can avoid all those mistakes, get to your goals faster and sooner. Once again, that's billykeels.com forward slash seven mistakes to avoid. Now back to the conversation. So I, I guess what, what I would like for us to do is, is kind of pivot because one of the things that we love here at the going with the going long family is a lot of people, we, we get started in real estate. And then once you get started in real estate, you start realizing, wow, there are a lot of other ways to actually have more control at the end of the day of the way that you generate income. Number one, having more control. Number two, being able to create it on a consistent basis and then being able to do it in a tax efficient manner. So although we, we, you know, we talk a lot about real estate, there's a lot of different things that we can do so that we can have more control ultimately of our lives. So I do want you to really talk to us about how um, you, from Bulletproof uh, Wealth perspective, how things work, how you're able to help us, uh, those of us that are looking to gain more control over our lives and be able to make the most efficient use of our assets. Mm -hmm. Well, what I do is I just help people figure out the best place to store money because the, the, the truth is in order to be able to jump on opportunities, you have to have dry powder, right? And you have to have access to capital when a deal comes along. And for example, a lot of these uh, even syndication opportunities that are, are made available to people, they only have so much capacity, 
They, you know, they only have so much capacity and a lot of the deals that I have seen lately get fully subscribed in a matter of 24 hours. I mean, sometimes six hours, I've seen it just absolute insanity on how fast these deals are filling up. And so what that means is that you cannot... Sorry, can yeah, I, can I, because I think it's important. Two things. Number one, for those of us outside of the United States, when we talk about dry powder, it's making sure that you have like cash, liquid cash at your disposal. And then number two, and this is the, really the, yeah. the important part here, Tom, is when you're talking about fully subscribed, you're also not talking about $200,000 raises. You're talking about multiple million dollar raises, correct? Just so people have the right uh, perspective. 100%. Yeah. I'm talking about raises in the 10 to 30 million range. Yeah. And they in, get fully in subscribed. Hours, I mean, in hours or days. In, in hours. Few days, yeah. yeah. Okay. A, a good, a, a friend of mine just did a $30 million raise for a fund um, that is specializing in mobile home parks. And he was offering a very good rate of a 12% pref, which is just huge. But that thing was gone. I think it was 24 hours that 30 million was subscribed. I mean, it, it was just insane. And dry, yes, dry powder means having money liquid meaning that you can access quickly to be able to take advantage of opportunities. So what I do with the Bulletproof Wealth Strategy is create specially, um, well, I create a line of credit that you can access quickly through a specially designed whole life insurance policy. It has a massive amount of benefits um, to be able to run it through that from a tax perspective, from all just creditor and predator protection. There's so many benefits to it that um, is is something that I really enjoy helping people understand how it works. So the, the best way that I can explain it, Billy, is I can compare it to a home equity line of credit. Would you say that most of your audience is familiar with how a home equity line of credit works? I would say yes, but if you want to give them a very like 10 second version of what that is, but yeah. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that most of the, okay. a home the new, a the home new, the line new of family members may not, but go ahead. Yeah, okay. Home equity line of credit. That is where you pledge your house as collateral, right? Which is where you pledge one asset to be able to borrow against it. So you're pledging your house as collateral and they give you an equity line that is on the, um, the, the, uh, what you own, your ownership percentage of the house, and you can then use it to do whatever you want with it. Typically, the uh, the home equity line is used for house renovations and things like that. So the best way for me to explain how this life insurance line of credit works is to compare it to a home equity line of credit. So the deal with the home equity line of credit, if you had a million dollar home and you had $500,000 paid off, they might give you an 80% loan to value, which means that you might be able to cap out at 800,000 and you would have 500 paid off. So they would give you a $300,000 equity line, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The thing with that is that that equity line is never going to increase. It's fixed. You can pay it off and get the 300 back and forth in and out, but you're never going to go up unless your house goes up in value and you go back and financially requalify for that credit line to go up, right? So with the life insurance line of credit, the amount of equity line that you have available goes up every year with each new deposit that you make. So you make a new deposit and your equity line increases. And the really exciting thing is the way I structure these is that by the fourth year, the equity line increases by more than your deposit amount. So if you put in 100,000, it's gonna increase by at least 100, but most likely by 105, 110, more than, you know, it's gonna be more than you put in. And that is, that's really cool. So at each year that you put in money, that equity line is gonna increase by a compounding more than you put in it. So the other thing is with a home equity line of credit, when you use it, it affects your debt to income ratio that is, gets reported to the credit reporting agencies. Um, so it actually, to max out a home equity line of credit is gonna reduce your FICO score, which is a bummer. Um, and people don't realize that that has that negative implication. But when this is properly structured, using it does not impact your credit score and it's off the radar of the credit reporting agencies, right? And that the other thing is that when you pay interest on a home equity line of credit, you're paying interest to the bank 
that gives you that home equity line of credit. And guess what? You do not own that bank, right? So that is profit to the bank. When you pay interest on a specially designed life insurance line of credit, you're paying interest to the insurance company. And because these things are set up through a mutual ownership, so it's only through mutually owned life insurance companies that I work with, they pay a dividend back to the policyholder. And the definition of a dividend, it's a return of the profit of the company back to the ownership party. So it's like you're getting a dividend paying stock kind of a thing, right? And there's no earning potential in a home equity line of credit. But again, you get an increase every year that it goes up in a life insurance. And that has to do with the ownership. So there's a lot of a lot of really great advantages to saving your money in a specially designed life insurance policy versus saving it in a bank, which is going to pay you nothing. Um, and that interest is going to be taxable, but you have to save it somewhere if you're going to be able to take advantage of these amazing opportunities that come up for a very short amount of time. Yeah. And this, you know, goes back to once again, being able to have more control, being able to have more access, but just some of the things that I want to make sure that the going long family really understands about what you said. Right. And I guess one of the things that if, if for those of us that are familiar with the concept, I mean, you can basically have one piece of currency. So $1 that is actually working in two places at the same time, which number one is just phenomenal. Number two, yeah. you talked about the fact that there are certain levels of privacy. So you can actually do this and not everyone knows exactly what you're doing. And then when yeah. you have, which, you know, is something that is very important. And also when you're able to do things that are in a tax efficient way, it's not only that you're having your money, make more money, you're eventually being able to keep more money, which means it gives you more probability of having the the highest control of the aspects of your life that are really important to you. Would that totally. be accurate? Yes, it's very, very good. So the whole thing of using your money at two places at once, that's a really powerful concept because anytime you can take an asset and use that asset to purchase another asset, you're adding leverage, okay? But the thing is, is that this is the safest way to do it because the original asset is not correlated to the other asset that you're purchasing. So a lot of times in the world of real estate investors specifically, they might take the equity from one real estate property to buy another one, and then they build the equity up in that one, and then they use that equity to buy another one. The problem with that is fully correlated. So in a real estate decline, all of your assets that are correlated are going to go down together, right? Which is not good. That's how bankruptcies happen, right? And that is that is exactly what happens is you have collateral calls and the, the bank wants their money back and boom, it's a chain reaction. And this is not good. And I don't want to set people up for that. That is why I developed the Bulletproof Wealth Strategy to where you have a safe asset that is non-correlated to the risk asset that you're putting your money into. Yeah, this this non-correlation is, is one of the things that's very, very important, something that you can also leverage. And once again, it helps you to ultimately have more control over the aspects of your life that are really important. So here's totally. the thing, that, here's the thing, Tom, like it, it's, we've got to get to the going long final three. But yeah. the thing is, I, I never ask anybody to go on long final three unless they tell me. And today you're our special guest. So unless you tell me that you're ready to go into the going long final three, I won't go there. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's how go for I, it. How did I know you were going to be ready, man? I knew, you were, <laughs> I knew you were ready. So here we go. So we started with you over today, about an hour south of Nashville, Tennessee. You know, I'd like to bring it back to this side of the pond, if you don't mind, Tom. And sure. I would love for you to share with the going long family, what is your favorite European city that you've either visited or is still on your bucket list to visit? All right. I love London. Okay. I'm just going to be honest with you. I love going to London because it has such a huge steeped heritage in the music and that's my my background so i'm a massive beatles fan so getting to go for example i went to abbey road studios where they created everything and i've done projects that i've recorded um you know hired abbey road to do strings on um, the projects that i've worked on so as a client i'm able to go there and you know really be able to get great tours and 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 meet people there and i absolutely just love London. So I awesome. would put that as the top one. All right, there we go. So another vote for London. So that will be your uh, your favorite uh, <laughs> European city. We, we'll go with yep. that. Perfect. Second question. And this really has to do a lot of the insight that I have seen 
been very fortunate, right, to meet lots of successful people. And I consider you to be someone who's also extremely successful. And one of the things that I, it's like this common thread that I found with really successful people. And it, it is the fact that really successful people typically get there because they do everything right the first time and they're able to continue to go up the, up. they just, I think I, I think I just said it. No, actually, yeah. Tom, it's an, it's an it's an inside joke. It's an inside joke with me and the entire Going Long family. They all know the joke all is right. coming, but hey, here we go. Here we go. I appreciate you keeping your calm. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's, it is a bit of a joke because the thing is, everybody make mis makes mistakes. We all make mistakes. And the reality is, very successful people, they make a lot more mistakes than most people. A whole lot more mistakes, right? But yeah. the reality is, they also do one thing very differently. And this is this is no joke. They do one thing very differently. Every single time there's a relevant mistake or a learning opportunity or whatever you want to call it, they stop, they learn from that mistake, and then they do everything that they can to put other tactics in place to minimize the probability of that exact same mistake happening again. So I would love to know from you and have you share with the Going Long family, because you are a successful person, what is the one lesson that you know the Going Long family needs to know today? so that they can minimize the probability of, of creating or doing the exact same mistake in the future. All right. So this is what I, this is what I would share. Okay. If you can find somebody who has gone before you and has done what you're attempting to do and you're able to learn from them, you're going to be miles ahead versus trying to just forge your own path. Okay. There's absolutely no question that, that trying to figure out how to invent the, you know, something from nothing is a lot harder than getting a mentor. So one of the things that has helped me dramatically is that I've been in a lot of masterminds where I've had other people speaking into what I'm doing who are at a similar level of success or have gone before me or are much more successful than I am in, in their chosen field. And I would say, you know, the biggest mistake I made was not knowing that early on and trying to do everything myself. Once that light bulb clicked and I was able to pivot and go, all right, you know, I'm beating my head against a wall, for example, trying to get into this um, special needs planning that it just wasn't working. And once I started listening to people who have gone before me and said, look, if it's, that's not working, do not keep trying to just keep pushing in an area. It's kind of like trying to, um, you know, push on a rope. It just kind of bends out of the way and it's not getting anywhere. So finding a mentor would be my, my best thing. And sometimes you've got to pay to do that. And I mean, you know, sometimes it can be quite, you, you know, you're investing in yourself, basically. So don't be afraid to pay to be involved in um, some great masterminds. Love that. Number one, be able to find someone who has already done the things that you're looking to do, surround yourself with them. And then also too, and I'm a big believer in this, uh, you, you can search for anything and everything. It's just a matter of time. And every single one of us has 24 hours in a day. And in order to get to a level uh, or whatever result that you're looking for, as you said, you can, you can keep pushing that piece of rope, or you can just get a stick that gets you exactly to touch the point that you need to touch. So do totally. not be afraid, afraid, afraid to uh, invest in yourself to help you get to the desired outcome faster. So appreciate that. And then the very last of the going long final three is really about helping us to feed our brains with knowledge here, Tom. So help us understand what's the one book that you would recommend to the going long family today? Well, look, this book right here, I absolutely love. It's called the case for IBC. And this is um, the second edition. It's written by an Austrian economic um, professor and a, uh, a guy who turns businesses around for a living. And these guys wrote this little book. It's not big, but it gives the fundamental understanding of what it is that we were talking about. And this, I believe so strongly in this book that when people book a time to talk with me, I literally send them a physical copy of this book in the mail because I don't know about you, but I cannot stand reading books on screens. It just doesn't work for me. So me I literally, I just send people a physical copy of this book when they book a time to talk with me because 
because I believe so strongly in it. It's called the case for IBC. And um, it's it really helped me understand um, the the concept of, you know, putting money through life insurance. And I'm working right now on creating my own book that um, I'm halfway through it and it's going good, but I'm not ready yet. But when I finish my own book, then I'm probably going to switch to sending out that one, obviously. But for now, I love this one. It's a great one. The case for RBC. Fantastic. So the case for RBC, we're also going to include that in the show notes. And then you have to let us cool. know when your, when your book comes out. We want to know about that as well, Tom. So, yeah. You know, I these conversations like they fly by, like they just go by super fast. And you know, I'm thinking about this this guy from Nebraska who was out there and he was enjoying and he wanted to try and get his music to sound like other people's. And so he found this passion. And then afterwards, he's like, "Hey, I got to leave here. I got to go somewhere else where I can actually do this." And start studying, and then you you take on formal education, and then from there, you actually are able to get into what was your dream role? You're meeting all these famous people. So you're probably never even starstruck anymore because you, you know, when you talk about being able to work with people like Bruce Springsteen, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and then yeah. from there, you also had the opportunity to come across someone who was doing their job. And they also helped you to recognize that, hey, listen, there's this type of insurance policy that eventually, you know, you you need it. You know, many people decide, oh, I don't need to do that. I don't need to make that investment. And then they can't yeah. perform their role. You did that. And then because of the benefit that you were receiving and having this tax-free kind of income and being able to sustain your life, it drove another passion in you to then be able to say, hey, look, this was, this was a major benefit to me. And so I want to go out and help share this with other people. You went out and you got further certifications and, and further uh, knowledge. And then from there, you've even created your own bulletproof wealth a way of helping other people. Um, you've yes. been very, very fortunate with your, or very gracious with your time today, with your expertise. And I know that I'm going to get in touch with you again. I know you and I are going to be talking uh, for multiple things. And I would also know, or I do know that the going long family is like, I want to find out more about Tom, help me understand more about these concepts and bulletproof wealth. So help us understand what is the best way for the going long family to get in touch with you and know more about what you're doing with bulletproof wealth. That's an awesome question. So the I have a website called bulletproofwealth.info.info. So bulletproofwealth.info. And there is a place on that main page to sign up. And all you do is put your name and email in and you literally get access to a free course, an educational course that I have worked on for years of training to watch these very, very concise um tight videos so that you don't, you're not wasting your time. And then once you watch these videos, which you can watch uh, the first half a dozen in about 40 to 45 minutes, then if what I'm saying resonates with you, then you can push a button in there and it says book a time to talk with me and we can go over what your qualification is. And I got to just say one thing that's super important. And that is, is that this strategy that I do only works if you are a U.S. citizen living in the U.S. And I'm just I hate to you know exclude people, but every country has their own mortality tables and it's a complicated thing, but you cannot do these strategies. You have to do them in your own country, wherever you're living. So feel free, though, to watch my videos from anywhere in the world that you're at and enjoy them. And then I can try to connect you with somebody that can help you if I'm not able to. Well, and listen, Tom, I really appreciate that uh, entire going along family bulletproofwealth.info is the place you want to go. Tom's made it really, really easy for you. And also, you know, because we are a very global community, we appreciate when you can also help us to understand that this is something very specifically for, or that you are able to help us specifically for those people that are living in the United States at the same yes. time. So many of us know other people that are living in the United States is this is a great way for you to share this, this, this educational content with friends or family or, or other there are people that you know that are living in the United States that could also um, benefit from this. So uh, there's a lot, a lot of different ways to help one another out there. So listen, Tom, you know, I can't thank you enough. I, I really, really appreciate you spending your time, investing your time with me and the entire Going Long family. And from the bottom of my heart, man, I, I really wanted to just say thank you very much. Well, you are welcome. And I had an absolutely wonderful time and I will look forward to staying in touch with you, Billy, for sure. Yeah. Fantastic. Sounds great. And Tom, if you give me just a second, just want to say two words to the Going Long family uh, before they get back to doing whatever they are doing today. Um, and listen, 
going along, family. Thank you so much for investing your time with Tom and I. Wasn't he awesome? I mean, he just helped to bring your mind to a new level and think about all the ways that you can have even more control following his bulletproof wealth strategy. Uh, and he, look, he's even giving you a way to get in touch with him and learn and be educated by him. So fantastic. Take him up on that. Uh, listen, in the meantime, I'm really looking forward to welcoming you back on the very next conversation. So until then, go out and make it a great day. And thank you very much. Wow, don't you love hearing from top-notch experts in the field? You know, when I was getting started, I really wish that I would have had access to such experts. And even more, I wish they would have given me like a really simple list of things to follow so that I could have gotten to my goals much faster and been much happier even sooner. So that's why I've created for you the seven things that you should avoid in order to be successful in long distance investing. And you can pick that up really easily by going to billykeels.com forward slash seven things to avoid. And also, if you liked today's episode, don't forget to leave a five star review. I'm looking forward to seeing you on our very next episode. So go out and make it a great day.